We're live. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Why are you so nervous, man? I don't know. She's never been this nervous before, man. Oh, what's wrong with her? First question, should we go? Yeah. So Let's Tara go. was asking us the questions. Tell us that life you see. Tell us the love story. Tell us the love story. Everyone likes to know this one. What? You do what are you looking at me? Because you I'll tell you the tell love it. story. I'll tell the love Actually, story. Actually, okay, go on. You go okay. On. So, me and Dee met back in 2015? 15 or 16. 2015. We met at the Tori Tori video shoot for PBN. Uh, if you Google or YouTube it now, you probably might see us both. You're in the video and I'm in the video. Yeah, yeah. So basically, both, yeah. yeah, let's go right back. Okay, so basically, um, I'm at the Tori Tori video shoot and PBN's like, right, we've got a new tour DJ who's joining us. You're going to meet him today. <laughs> so D walks into the room and I remember thinking to myself, I was like, Fight off all the ladies, <laughs> walking, Shut up. all the models are on me. I was like, yo, don't worry, it's cool. I'm just okay. doing my job. But I remember, and then Serena pops out of nowhere. And she goes, oh my God, are you the tour DJ? Are you the new DJ? But the funny thing was, I knew you as David, right? Mm -hmm. So when I met you, I didn't even realize that you were Punjabi. You had a man bun, and like, who had man buns back then? Nobody. I was the first, I was the first. I remember looking at you and I was like, this guy is not Punjabi. I was really confused. I was like, why has PBN got a non Punjabi DJ? Yeah. And then obviously I realized after you were Punjabi. But yeah, I remember what, meeting what? you and I was just like yeah. really excited to have someone join the team. Yeah. So she came at me from nowhere, like, oh my God, are you the new DJ? I'm like, yo, chill out, man. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> it was the first day we met. And then since then, we spent loads of time together over that period because obviously we you were gigging. The, yeah, we were gigging. So we were literally doing Around the like, world different locations all over the country weddings all club over the place. gigs yeah yeah so we had Day loads of stuff and at the time i couldn't drive i didn't have a car so basically poor d would always get the short end of the straw and he'd have to always come to my house and pick me up to go to the gigs because i'd have no way of getting there mm. and i remember when you came to the house and my dad was like whose car is this outside the house who's who's picking you up and then he came out to come and see you. He came out to try to give me a dressing down, but all he did was shake my hand and said, Jal Tika. <laughs> <laughs> so nah. so da he got dad's approval from then. But we didn't really, like, we were just basically work colleagues, weren't we, mm. at that time. So Teammates. we got along, like, we were friends, but only to a certain extent, because every time I'd ask D any questions, he'd always just give me the most blunt responses ever. <laughs> so we'd have the most awkward car journeys, because I'd be there like, so tell me about your day, how's your family? And he'd be like, yep. All good, yep. Like just proper blunt answers. And I just think, this guy is so rude. <laughs> yeah, it's, Serena was just too much, man. We're just doing, trying to do our gigs, trying to, do our, trying to get to the location, trying to... Serena's like, oh, so tell me all about your life. And like, how many sisters do you have you got? Have you got a granddad? Have you got... Like, I'm like, oh, yo. Yeah, cool. Like, that was it. Yeah. But anyway, um, then we went to Nairobi. That's 20, when everything changed, wasn't 2017, it? 2017, and then she fell in love with me, basically. So no, you have to set the scene. So basically, we'd known each other for about two, three years at this point. Mm -hmm. And then we had a trip to Kenya. So that was my first abroad gig with like the team PBN. So we all went out there to Kenya and me and you wanted to go out and explore. So shout out to my friend Suchi, who's from Kenya. Big up Suchi. Who I met at uni. And she wasn't even in Kenya at the time, but she put us in contact with her family friends and said to them, listen, take Serena and Dee out in Kenya, show them around because I'm not there. So they came. I remember Girl we, Preet, yeah, I? the Kent family, they looked after us so well over there. So I remember me and Dee went out and they literally took us basically on our first day, didn't they? And they took us to the elephant sanctuary, to the giraffe park. They took us for a lovely meal. And mm. I think that was the first time I like saw a different side to you. Mm. Cause I didn't really know you much before. It was just it's bits where she and bobs. In, it's where she fell in love with me basically. Whatever. I keep saying, you know, but I do remember thinking like he was like really like sweet throughout that whole trip and like was really looking after me. And I just got to know you more as a person. I remember we like sat down, me and you, we had dinner together. And the funny thing is, do you remember that Snapchat we did? And we had dinner together, just me and you, and we kept calling it date night. Mm. Do you remember? Kind of, yeah. So I think he obviously liked me, but you just wasn't saying anything. <laughs> Are you on about it? Why would you be calling it date night if you didn't like me? It's just a joke, isn't it? It's just <laughs> oh, a joke. Whatever. So we, we had that and then I actually remember going back to my hotel room and thinking, don't fall for this guy because he's like in the team, we're work colleagues, like it's just going to get messy. So 
I thought to myself, I was like, I need to just not let that happen. <laughs> so then after that, so then, yeah, like I started telling my friends, fam, I was like, oh, oh that's girl. really sweet. She'd never admitted this on camera before in her life. Every time I say it to her, her friends always come up to me, oh my God, you're... You're the DB or you're David, like we hear all about you all the time. Like this, we weren't even together at this point. I was like, whoa, what the fuck? What do you know about me? I didn't like, even say that yeah, much. Yeah, okay. But why oh. would they have heard about me? Like, you know what I mean? So I'm like, okay. So I she's just, talking about me to yeah, her friends. Yeah, I, I did tell my friends. I was like, oh, you know, like, he's really sweet. She's like, trying to sweet. play it down. Like, yeah, no, like. Yeah, because I'm not going to show you all my cards. Anyway, should we take cut long story short? Okay, long story like, short. Okay, so what happened then was I eventually got a car. I started driving and I'd always said to Dee, because he'd given me so many lifts. I said, listen, if ever you need a lift in the future, like, please let me know because I feel like I owe you one. So I remember I got my car and then you messaged me and you saw it on my Snapchat and you were like, yo, when's this lift happening then? Mm. And then from then we'd organise like a little Nando's, not even a date, it was a get together, a Nando's get together. So it was pretty much a date. I didn't, I didn't know what to think of it though. I was just kind of looking forward anyway, to meeting we went, you. He just, made me drive in the snow. I was about, a new driver. I never made you drive. You drove out of your own fucking free will. I was so scared. I'd literally only driven to like my office at the time and back. Mm. And I'd never driven out from that. But just for this guy, a flipping drew, drove in the snow for like a good 25 minutes. She nearly made us me. crash. She just drove straight through a giveaway. I'm like, yo, you know it's a giveaway? And we just literally <laughs> slotted in between two cars just out of pure luck. I was like, yo, do you know what you just did there? She's like, oh, what? Just driving down the road, like That's changing gears. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> this is like some Fast and Furious shit by mistake. That's probably still how I drive now. Yeah, it's still how you drive now, not gonna lie. So remember, we were in Nando's together. And, and that was it? No, but that's that was how the there. love story. That's it. Coming no, up. No, but I have to carry it on it's from there. Long, we have, no, it doesn't matter because okay. we can edit it all up. Anyway, I'm editing it so I can cut it the bits and pieces I want in it. <laughs> <laughs> so we were in Nando's and then um, I remember we were talking because at that time I'd got like a proper a proper, I say, like a proper corporate kind of job. Yeah. And I was like talking to Dee and I was like, yeah, I don't know if the singing thing's gonna carry on anymore. I feel like I'm just gonna dedicate myself to this corporate world and move up. At that point, I, w I just thought, I'm not interested in Serena as, 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 as a partner at that point. Because I thought, if you're not interested in chasing your dreams and you're gonna go work for the man and then try to build a career in that and, you, and you've got an opportunity to do something great where you can actually enjoy it every day, and, and that and you didn't have the, that vision, you're not a visionary. I, I, I didn't want to be with someone that wasn't a visionary at that point. Because mm -hmm. I remember like you turning around to me and you were saying, what do you mean you're not going to carry on with singing? Like, you know, do something creative, do something fun. I think it was the first time that someone had turned to me and said, you know, you can do it. I think I didn't believe in myself. Mm. So I was quite taken aback when you spoke to me because I thought, oh, OK, like this person believes in me when I didn't even believe in myself. And then I remember like even after when I dropped you back to your house and we sat in the car for a good hour and I'd bought this, like my dad had bought this car for me and I had no idea like of any of the function. And literally Dee sat in the car with me for an hour and he was like, this is where your air con is. This is where your indicator is. I just didn't even know anything about this indicator. car. Well, I'm just joking. I'm being, <laughs> I'm exaggerating. But I remember you like took all that time out to show me everything. I just remember thinking, like, this guy is, like, so knowledgeable and, like, you know, pushing me to achieve my dreams. And it was just all the kind of things that I always saw myself looking for in a partner. And it was kind of in you. Mm. And then I remember getting home and I saw a text message from you and it was like, oh, by the way, you looked really nice. And I thought, what? Because we never spoken like that to each other. Mm. You know, we'd always just kept it very, <laughs> very neutral. And then when you said that, I thought, oh, OK, is he trying to make a move or something? So we were like chatting and stuff from Thanks. there and yeah, really. That was it. Long story short, fucking 10 minute story. It was this important story because people need to know like the journey of how we began. I think we should even go into more depths if we want to. No, 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 don't go too far into it. Why? <laughs> should we for another time? What, what? About the, when you blanked me. Oh, yeah. Look we'll, at him we'll trying to skip that, that over. Time. Anyway, go on then, talk about it. Let's talk about it. <laughs> so what did you do? Because we started talking and chatting. So then obviously from that point we, we talked for about, what, a week or two? Yeah, like we, but he was being all nice. Like it wasn't just chatting, like literally I'd wake up in the morning and have like these nice good morning texts, like good morning, beautiful. So we were talking on a level and then I just decided that, nah, I need to concentrate on myself. But I didn't actually let her know that I yeah. wanted to do that. He didn't let me know that he was going to blank me for seven months. So then I, it was a bit longer than seven months. But anyway, uh, and then I just, uh, just, uh, yeah. 
I, I, I just thought, hmm, I, I don't know if I see a, a future with you. That's peak, you know. I still never let him live it down to this day. I still feel so cut then, up about it. So then it. I just cut her off. And then we cut this bitch off. <laughs> anyway, and then... No, wait, because I need to explain that. So, oh, yeah, it's too long, no, man. No, it's not long. Okay, I blanked her then. We're, we're, now we're all like, we're engaged, no, we're getting married the girl, to school. No, the, because the girls need to know about this. <laughs> so anyway, I remember he was giving me these really dry the responses. Yeah? He was giving me these really dry responses. And you know, just immediately you get an instinct as a girl, like this guy's not interested. And I've never been that person to try and like beg for attention. So as soon as I started getting that vibe, I just didn't even bother messaging him. Like, you know, some people would try and message and be, be like, oh, why are you not talking to me and all this stuff? I didn't even bother. I was like, fine, it's mm. cool. I see where it is. But I was really upset because we'd to known each fair, other for so many years. I thought that um, you'd message me. Like normally girls would have messaged me like, hey, like, where have you been? Like blah, blah, blah. Pop up or something. No, I wasn't going to give you that. But she didn't do it. And I thought, no. and I had ratings actually. I was like, oh, she, she like got pride in herself. She, she hasn't like tried to like ask me why I'm not messaging her or anything like that. She just literally, when I blanked her, she just blanked me back. Yeah, I was like, forget it. I ain't going to bother with this guy. And then I remember promising myself, I'll never, ever entertain like a relationship or anything with D again. That worked out good for Shut you. Up. Jeez. Don't even try and fist pump me. Don't even try and fist pump me. Because <laughs> then like six, seven months later, we had another gig and we started talking again and flipping out. Like, anyway, she started glowing up in this time, by the way. Glowing up. So I'm like, oh shit, new dresses. I'm, like, I'm not liking it, but I'm seeing it. You know what I mean? Because I can't let you see that I'm liking it. But I'm like, whoa, she. It was good. I had that time. <laughs> so she's glowing up. I'm like, oh shit, she's glowing up. And then you glowed you up won. as well. Let's then not forget lost. that. Oh yeah, then I lost. He I, lost I, weight I, as I well. I lost a bit of weight. I was like, yo, pumping the iron and shit. Yeah. And then I, um, then you launched a brand where you was kind of launching. You was thinking about launching a brand, and I thought, oh, sick. Yeah, so I wasn't, I think I'd learned by that time, I didn't want to go down the corporate ladder and I yeah. wanted to actually do something for myself. So I started like posting about me launching Then that Star tweaked my Serena. interest again? Yeah. Um, and that tweaked was your interest, you mean sparked your interest again. Whatever the word is. <laughs> Let's not get into the semantics of, and that was it then. We, we basically- We did, we made it basically. We rekindled it and he she He took was, me on a nice <laughs> day and he explained kind of why he decided to blank me for like seven, eight months. <laughs> and I- And that was it, we- uh, gave him. We, we're back. We're here. That's the, what would you say? That's the how story. The, the cookie crumbles. It is how the cookie crumbles. So we've been together now nearly four years in September. Yeah. Yeah. Four years. Yeah. It'd be five years when we get married. But yeah, but I've obviously known you and you've known me since. About eight years. I'd yeah. Say. So we've known each other for a long time. Mm. But yeah, that's the love story. That's the love story. Long story short. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> Next question. Alu Gobi Pronte. Alu all the way, mate. Alu as well. Boop, boop. Yeah, soft and fluffy. That's why I'm mar marrying you. <laughs> if she said Gobi, this would be a fucking game changer. Not that I can make them. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll learn for you. Who has the better taste in music? Come on, that's me. Yeah. This, she listens to fucking Britney Spears and shit. Like, yeah. Like, she listens to the top 40 charts, man. Pisses me off. I'm like, yo. Sway away from the top 40, listen to some other... That's me all day, I'll have I love chart music, like chart music is my jam. Yeah, obviously good, my Punjabi good. music, anyway. but it's good. I'm with a DJ who obviously has a massive range of music taste. So you've taught me lots of like new yeah, yeah. genres of music and you've introduced... Oh, by the way, while, while we're talking about music, this time that she thought she was coming out on Not A Date With Me at the Nando's, which we were talking about earlier oh. on, she curated a playlist that she thought I would like so when we were in the car together, she'd be like, oh, all these songs, I know that DB would like these songs, boom, boom, boom. So <laughs> does someone do that if it's not a date? But anyway, you, you be the judge, not me. Oh, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Oh, you whatever. be the judge. Oh, the judge. whatever. <laughs> right, next question. How did you manage to keep it a secret from social media? Oh, just not post. <laughs> yeah. And um, just act, just act oblivious to people ask you, thinking that you're with somebody. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, that's the thing, I used to, I used to tell her, do, don't, she used to be like, oh, what should I do when people ask me? And that, um, I'd be like, don't, just ignore the question. Yeah, I just basically wouldn't answer any questions yeah. to do with So you're not lying by saying you're not with someone, but you're not telling them that you are with someone. Which parts of your personalities are similar and which bits are different? That's hmm. a good question. We're, we both love food, so we're like yes. foodies. Massive foodies. But then like, 
patience wise i've got zero and she's got like endless patience yeah well not endless but with certain things you're very patient with whereas i'm not patient with anything yeah uh, what else? well so what else similarity wise i think we're both very driven we both driven. have like common goals we want to work towards we both want to be super successful yeah driven ambitious yeah yeah and like do good things for the world i think we me and we've always spoken about wanting to like give back and Legacy, help people yeah. and make an impact yep. so i think we're both similar in that in terms of another difference uh i'd say I'd say, we always say it, don't we? Book smart, street smart. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I've obviously gone to university, done a law degree. I'm very... She's very... Mm, it took a lot of... It's taken... A, even now, you're learning, aren't you? And I'm learning, everyone's learning. But I mean, like, I've had to operate a business, had to, like, you know, just know things about life, financial yeah. things. Yeah. Like, but you learn that uh, uh, as, like, you as you go. As you go, the anyway. journey. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, whereas Dee's very, like, he's come, he didn't go to uni or anything, but yeah. he's super smart when it comes to just general life and business and all that stuff. Mm. That's a big difference between us because I've, you've yeah. had to, like, pick up a lot for me where I've just had no 100%. clue when he's been like, you've not done this, you've not done that, where's your, like, taxes stuff and all this. I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, what, tax? You work for tax? What the fuck? I'm like, yo. <laughs> I know. I'm yeah. the manager and she's the talent. That's how we work That's it. it. <laughs> Let's go. Next, next question. How do you remain so positive always? Uh, that's a good one. Um, we're not always positive, I, I wouldn't say. Some days we have days when we're negative, even like yesterday when you're like, when you've come over and you're like, oh, I'm so anxious, like I feel like I'm going to throw up and shit. And like we have to calm each other down. Yeah. We just have to be each other's like rock and each other's place of comfort mm. uh, in days where you're ne I negative and stuff. Uh, yeah. And also, just generally for yourself, just just literally, just be positive constantly for yourself. Like, uh, always think that we're in a blessed position. Always have gratitude for life. Uh, once you once you once you're grateful for what you've got, then you realise actually there's a lot of things to be positive for. Instead yeah. of just thinking, if you're gonna constantly think about the thing that you haven't got, then that's gonna make you in a negative mindset, and you're gonna be constantly negative. I mean, well, to be honest, I when I think about you and positivity. I've never, I've actually never seen you be negative about anything. Yeah. Like ever, like literally like the world could be in flames and like Dee <laughs> would still find a way to make it positive. But yeah, so we just got to get the water and put it out and everything. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there's always a solution with yes, Dee and he's come right. With solutions. He's always right as well. Like there's honestly been instances where I've thought, you know, this is not going to get resolved. Or there's no solution to this and he'll always stay positive and figure it out. So I think, um, I think you're really positive and I'd say both something that we both do is we, we started to more recently as well is like showing gratitude so we'll like send messages either yeah. in the morning or at night like what we're grateful for for the day and I think yeah. that helps us to like stay positive. Yep. Did you know that DG was going to propose? No! Okay, so right, let's tell, let's tell that story actually. Okay. So obviously we wanted to do the traditional thing, we had our rukka first. Well, actually, I wanted to propose to you before I rock her. Did you actually? Yeah, and I was going to do it because my sister was going to get married in Cyprus as a destination wedding. So you was going to propose to me before we had a rock up? I'm surprised cause I thought you'd want to rock up first. But then that got cancelled due to COVID and all the yeah. bollocks that we went through for that. And I thought, how's another way that we can be abroad? Because I wanted it to be abroad somewhere cool. Uh, but her not know it's coming. Like I don't want to just like say, oh, let's go on a holiday. She know it's coming. I know straight away because you've never been on a holiday. But I wouldn't. Before. I would never say. To, I've always said to her from day dot, we're not going on a holiday till we get married. Um, and then, um, so I was like, how do we do it? And then I was hoping that her dad would take her away on holiday somewhere. Oh really? You've never told me this. Yeah. I, thought, I was hoping that your dad would take you away for the last holiday of the family. Oh. Uh, that never happened. So then that happened. So I thought, oh shit, this ain't gonna happen. And then. I got the booking in Canada to do to do DJ at a wedding. Um, got you the book, the the ticket, um, and I thought that I'd propose there if you're coming with me. But then you come up with the idea uh, about doing a pre-wedding shoot because we'd already done our rock at that yeah. stage. Yeah, we're not getting married towards the tail end of next year, so I felt like there was so much time that he and I was throwing her off the scent. I was like, yo, we're not. Uh, I can't afford to like to to do it right now. You'd have to like bear with us. Yeah, so he got, kept we're saying trying to buy to a house, we've got a wedding, we've yeah. got loads of things going on. Like, like let's, uh, it's not going to be happening anytime soon. So she was thrown off the scent completely. And then we ended up going out. Like, I'm literally getting ready for this pre wedding shoot we've organised. Like, so oblivious. She organised her own proposal. Because <laughs> 
She's like, I organize my own shit. proposal. Then she goes and gets some of these outfits and shit. And I'm like, yes, yeah, sick. This is going to be perfect outfits for the, the event. And I'm like, this is sick. Because I always thought, oh, how would I be able to get her to wear nice outfits? But then I know I can always make you manage to wear nice outfits anyway. Yeah. But this was another level. So I just remember like the photographer was saying to me, Serena, okay, you can look into the distance and then Dee's going to come behind you and just hug you or whatever. So I'm just there, my own little so world. Lake. Yeah. overlooking like the valley of the mountains beautiful but the, the, the weather wasn't as great so you couldn't see the top of the mountains because the, the clouds would come and cover it but um we got this little opening where the clouds opened out so we they quickly ran us to that into that location you're quick get into the location so we we we, we got the, they placed serena like facing the shore of this lake looking outwards and then the cameraman comes over to me and gives me a battery. He goes like, quick, op he opens his bag and gives me a battery. So I'm thinking, oh, he just wants me to hold his battery. So I'm looking at his battery like, what am I gonna do with this fucking battery? I'm thinking he wants me to hold it. And then he looks at it himself. He's like, oh shit, I've given you a battery. And then he takes the battery back off me and then gives me the ring. <laughs> Cause, uh, and I was like, oh shit. Cause he's trying to do it all quickly and coy when you're looking the other way. I found so that now, so hilarious. I've got the ring in my hand and, I, and that's a point where I'm like, oh shit, I've got a fucking proposal now. Cause obviously, I didn't really cut myself ready for it. I was like, oh shit, it's happening now. And I'm like, fuck, because you can't plan it now. It's whatever happens, happens. So then I'm trying to hide this ring, trying to get it over to where you are. And then they're like, okay, don't look over, don't look back to you. So I'm in my own world, literally like in position, getting ready for this shot. And they're like, three, two, one, turn around. I turn around, I just see him down on one knee. I'm just. I've honestly never been so speechless in my whole life. Like I know Dee kept saying. I've never oh. seen Serena speechless, man. This is, <laughs> she can talk for the world. She can talk for England, literally. That's why she's at the Commonwealth Games. Because she can fucking talk for England. <laughs> this time she was speechless. I'm like, fucking speak. Like, you speak. He thought I was going to have this she was really be like, dramatic oh my God. reaction. But I think I was so, was so stunned. stunned but... I just remember looking at him and just being like, oh my gosh, this is happening, this is the moment. And I just got so emotional. And I just started hysterically crying for the next <laughs> like 10 minutes, like fully bawling my eyes out. Yeah, it's funny, man. But anyway, we made it happen. We pulled it off. You pulled it off, boo. Boom. Who wears the trousers in the ship? Who wears the trousers in the ship? That's what the question is. <laughs> I think they meant to say relationship, but okay. Uh, that'll be me. Yeah, I won't even try and like big it up. It yeah. is D. I basically just listen to everything he tells me to do because... And it's worked out for you for this far? It's true, it has. Yeah. Even though it pains me to say it. It has, it has. He does wear the trousers and it's okay. And it works out in the end. <laughs> what are each other's best and worst habits? Oh, oh okay. God. Right, I'm going to go first. So... Quick. Okay, quick. okay, okay. So your worst habit is the fact that you always try and blame everything on me. Yeah. And that pisses me off. I swear to you all the time, like anything could happen. Like I could be on the See phone See how women can just like pull fucking, I'm still trying to think of my worst habits and she's just pulling them off, reeling them off. I know straight away. Worst habit, like I could be on the phone to this guy. He would trip, fall over and somehow I'd be like, ah, oh, Serena, you made me fall over. I'm not even there. <laughs> and I always find some way to blame you for everything. It's listen, always listen, my fault. Listen, listen, coming out. If you remember AK Amazing back in the days, remember like, the parent, like he did that skit when he was like, he'd always, he'd always blame the kid of anything. He'd open the ca a cabinet so he'd fall out and he'd blame. That's me. That's literally what he does. Look at, look at, if you look at Serena, this is my habit, worst habit of yours. If you look at Serena, she's a very glamorous lady. She loves makeup and you think like, oh, what a lady, like, like she must be so like angelic and princessy. If you ever seen her eat, you're, I nearly fucking, Walked out of the first date, let me just tell you. She, she, this is how she eats. Mmm! Mmm, basting. Mm. I don't, I swear. You swear to God. I don't. I've got video evidence of you doing it. I don't. It's disgusting. Only when I eat popcorn and crisps, I really Not like crunching it. Not even just normal food. I've had to like, tell you over the years, yo, stop eating like that's disgusting. But you've so you calmed down a bit now, but before, oh my days. Best habits, let's go best. Okay, your best habit. Um, Oh gosh, where do I even start? Oh, you can pull the fucking worst ones out. No, because quickly. there's so many. There's, there is so many good habits of yours. I'd say your best habit is um, your selflessness. Like D is the most selfless person I know. He will always like put me above any of his own stuff. And it's just so nice. 
Um, like he'll literally give up everything to make sure that, you know, things happen for me or like I'm looked after. Mm. And even not even just me, just like with your family or your friends. Like if you've got something important on, you'll always cut things to help other people. I mm. think that's such a nice quality of yours. Yours. Tick tock, tick tock, da 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 da. Count down. Uh, best habit is, um, I just think, just how constantly bubbly and like happy you are, no matter how flipping, no matter what's going on in the world, you always seem to just be bubbly and nice and just have a great energy. Everyone seems to, everyone, everyone that knows you knows about your energy, and it just radiates volumes. And it radiates into other people, and uh, that's one thing I've picked up of from yourself is just to always put out this really good energy, like like you know, positive, good vibes, and just genuine. Thanks. Oh. <laughs> Don't start crying. <laughs> Next. What's the cutest thing you've done for each other? Oh. oh I cutest wouldn't have chose thing. that question. That's a good question. I think it's getting us thinking. Okay, cutest thing you've done for me is. Well, one of, he's done loads of cute things for me, but one of the things I'll always remember is when you're doing your choreo work and he was throughout lockdown, just constantly driving like to Scotland back, like two hours sleep, like just working so hard. I don't even know how we got through that period. And I remember it came to my birthday and he must have, I'm not even joking, had one hour sleep, driven to Scotland and back. He managed to get himself home and he made my favorite ever food which is pie and mash he fully went home from scratch made this whole like chicken pie and mash and gravy and this is during lockdown as well so we couldn't even go out and eat or whatever he comes over he's bought all this food he's made it for the whole family as well so not just me he literally cooked dinner for the whole family the most tastiest pie mash and gravy i've ever had like even the gravy was from scratch no bisto thing it was from scratch made Mm -hmm. And I always remember just being that the cutest thing because you were so tired during that time. You had these bags under your eyes. You had not shaved, like nothing. But you <laughs> still went to that effort to do that. And I'll always remember that was like the sweetest thing ever. Oh, no. I have such a bad memory, man. You guys are going to fuck me up, man. I'm going to be in the doghouse because of you. <laughs> cutest thing. Hmm. Shit, look at her. I can just see her at the corner of my eye like, <laughs> cute things. Come on. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit, what do I even, uh, what, do I, what can I remember, what can I remember, man? Quick, 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 <laughs> uh, A few hours later. <laughs> uh, hmm. Oh for fuck's sake. Listen, I'm bad at memory, man, what can I remember? Just think, I've done loads of nice cute things for you. And I'm not going to re-trigger your memory. They can't see. Shut up. <laughs> Look at him drinking his water. He's so nervous. He's like really trying I'm to try stall time to think about a cute thing I've done for you. Anyway, uh, don't you need to like redo the cameras? I don't know. I'm rejig that shit. Okay. Um, I don't know, man. There's too many to think of. That's just a cop-out answer. I know. That's why I'm trying to cop it out a bit. Probably when you, you, you saw the state of my... Um, my DJ headphones, so my, everyone knows that I always have the Sennheiser's HT25s and I've had these for like since my 18th birthday. So my, my parents got it for me for my 18th birthday, I've always had them, but they were battered. And you sit on how battered they was and then um, you got them for me for my birthday and I thought that, that was probably the most thoughtful thing you could have done for me because that, that's the kind of stuff that I take very um, what, what's the word? That's the things that, that mean, mean a lot to me. You, yeah. yeah. Serena just sent them one day and she just ordered me a she ordered me a pair that was like. I'm not sure I understand. Shut up. <laughs> Siri's like, what the hell are Siri, you talking about? She ordered me a pair which were customised as well. Like she had them in gold and shit. It was really cool with the with the gold corded cable and everything. It was sick. Yeah. But is the big day in Canada or UK? UK. UK. We're both from the UK. We're from the UK. If I had a choice though, it'd be Canada. You'd Vancouver. bloody love to do it in Canada. Canada would be sick. <laughs> Canada would be sick, but no, it's going to be UK. close to home, UK. Do you help pick the ring? 
Ah, okay. So no. no, I had. I was fully against her picking the ring at all, or even telling me how she wanted it or anything. Because I, because obviously I do bridal makeup, so I meet so many girls, and they're always like, "Yeah, I went with my fiance. We chose the ring together." Like, because he has no clue what I'd want, and I'd always kind of like hinted to D, "Come on, you know, let's have a look at rings." But he was just so against it. Nah. Like, no, I am picking your ring. She tried to hint at me to go pick up rings. I was like, "No, mate, that's my job." Show me the ring. Come on, man, come true with the thing. <laughs> he did so good. So he. Um, so well, I took, you a, can, I yeah, took a on. ring of hers that she wears. Um, I stole it from her um, collection at home, and I knew what finger she wore it on. So then I took it to the jeweler. I said, "This is what finger she wears it on, which is the middle finger." And um, and if she puts it on this finger, it's loose. So we kind of judged what size it'd be from there. And then from there, we just, I designed the whole ring from scratch. Yeah, he did it all without my input. Did you have any, I think the only thing I'd always said to you is like, I just want a really sparkly ring. Oh yeah, so she said she wanted a really sparkly ring, which is all to do with the diamond, the stone. So uh, yeah, so when I went to the jeweler, I was like, yo, she wants the sparkliest diamond you got. And it's all to do with the clarity of the things, um, which I already knew a little bit about anyway. Um, so then we, we chose that stone together. I knew I wanted the oval. Shape, I know that you'd like that. I just, I know what you'd like. And I think it's also nice the fact that you've done it yourself. So it's mm. like what you wanted me to have. So that makes it more Even special better. for me anyway. So thank you. Thanks, I appreciate question. it. So someone said, Congrats on the engagement. If you argue, how do you make up for each other? <laughs> That's a funny one. <laughs> if we argue. I know do. what we do. Go on. So everyone knows Dee's got a hot headed temper on him he's quite yeah. a hot-headed character so like when we argue i always think the best way to kind of overcome an argument is just through laughter so yeah. to try and ease the tension i started doing this thing where i would just <laughs> poke you like that <laughs> <laughs> so i just literally just poke him like this on his arm and i'm like can we be friends now <laughs> And then he just starts laughing and then we kind of, it works. we make up, don't we? So I feel like laughter is our way of making up from arguments, mm. just kind of easing the tension. Obviously, we, if it's something serious, that's not going to work because sometimes I try the pushing and then like, uh, he gets, <laughs> <laughs> I try the poking and he gets even more angry. So I'm like, shit, <laughs> shit, wrong time. Now we get through it, we get through it. Yeah. So congrats on your engagement. What's the age gap? Mm. What is the age gap? Depends what time of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Should we let people guess? Actually, let's not even answer okay. it. People can guess and tell us how old they think they each think, of us are. Yeah. Yeah. So comment below. Yeah. Like, subscribe, comment. <laughs> what the age gap is. Yeah, how old do you think me and Dee are? This is probably a good time now to tell everyone yeah. kind of what this is we're doing and where this is going to go. So this is the first video um, on this channel. And we're going to be launching a podcast soon. Boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any air horns. Um, so we're launching a podcast. We've recorded a few already. Me and Dee together. Yep. Um, we're hopefully trying to get the production levels up to this kind of level. Um, Shout out Taran Daliwal. Mr. Taran Daliwal behind, uh, behind the scenes. He's got some really cool guests lined up. And we wanted to do it together. A female yeah. and male perspective. Different perspective. So we've got completely different perspectives in certain things. So it's good to have... Um, a balanced, uh, pers uh, balanced opinions, you yeah. could say, or perspectives. Uh, keep and keep an eye out. We'll be launching very, very soon. Yeah, and it. Look out for that. Good like, comment, coming. subscribe, share. <laughs> All that good oh, stuff. Oh fuck! I'm a YouTuber. 